Uh, I know that we have a tight schedule today, uh, this morning. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get started uh, right now. I know it's only ten oh one, but I think uh, most of you know the the first part of this, which is welcome. I'm Adam Pearl. I'm president and CEO of our Pro. Uh oh, Adam just froze. Um, okay, I don't know if you can hear me temporarily. It's Anne Marie um, because Adam just froze on my screen uh, directly in uh, in the uh, the presentation. The other thing I'll say is uh, that uh, this webinar is being recorded. It will be available on Art Pride's website later today. Uh, so if you miss something, you can always go back and. Uh, and go. Um, all right, so I want to introduce Sharnita Johnson, who is the program director for the arts at Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation. And Sharnita's a great friend of Art Pride's. I don't know if we can hear Adam. Adam froze again and he's muted. Um, and we think, I think we lost him. Okay, so Sharnita is a program director of arts for Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation. I'm sure uh, many of you already know uh, how great a friend she's been to the entire arts sector. And Sharnita's gonna talk today about um, something that everybody's had a lot of questions about, the New Jersey Arts and Culture Recovery Fund. And so um, Sharnita, you're on, are you there? I am here making sure that I have a good connection. Yes, you're good. Okay, great. So good morning, everybody. It's Friday. Um, if that means anything, I know our days have turned into one big week. Um, and I am broadcasting live from my hometown of Detroit, Michigan. Um, I arrived here on Sunday and I missed New Jersey already. Um, so thanks, um, Anne-Marie and Adam, and hopefully Adam um, will be able to rejoin us. I am um, going to talk about the Arts and Culture Recovery Fund. Um, it's a project that myself and a number of other um, arts funders in New Jersey have been working on for a number of months now. So um, I am co-chairing with Jeremy Grunin of the Grunin Foundation, and we have representation from the State Arts Council and several other um, foundations on the steering committee. Um, Grunin Foundation, the Dodge Foundation, and Prudential Foundation, um, who's also serving on the steering committee, have regranted some dollars. And what we're envisioning as a statewide arts fund um, that will support arts organizations and individual artists. Um, the fund is hosted at the Princeton Area Community Foundation and they are partnering with us. Um, unfortunately, I am not able to share a lot of details because we haven't gone live. We're um, going to go live very shortly, but we're still putting together um, some things behind the scenes and we're still very actively fundraising um, as many of you know, the, there is not a huge amount of private philanthropy in organized philanthropy in New Jersey. So there are a, a handful of organized staffed foundations. So most of us are involved in this endeavor, but we've also set up the fund in a way that individuals can support. We have lots of um, individual donors across the state who love the arts, who understand um, the difficult position that the arts and culture sector has been in as a result of the pandemic and really want to do something. Um, we uh, I have set the fund up that units of government can also support. Um, and honestly, we are looking for small donor um, support as well. So they there will be an opportunity for um, individuals, if you want to give five bucks or 25 bucks um, toward this fund, you know, it, we're inclusive and we know that everybody cares about the arts. So we want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to participate. Um, and I don't know if we're going to take any questions um, just in the chat or Amory, how you're going to handle that. Thank but you. Um, um, I'm not going to monitor the chat because otherwise I'll lose my screen. But if you see okay. questions and can answer them, go ahead. Um, okay. 
Um, so like I said, I, I don't have a lot of details right now because we're in the quiet phase. We're still very actively fundraising, which has been a challenge as all of you, I'm sure, understand, um, particularly uh, with the challenges that have happened around the pandemic and the need for emergency support. However, we understand that the arts and culture sector is one of the most vulnerable sectors, and which is why we left at the opportunity to put together this fund. Um, we know that there are lots of funds nationally and regionally that have been dedicated to the arts and culture sector, and we thought that we had to do something. So, I don't, Paul I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Awesome, I'm back. Sorry, the internet all over the state is uh, interesting at the moment. <laughs> um, we do have a couple of uh, questions, mm -hmm. which is uh, there were questions about fundraising. It has a fundraising goal been set? Um, and uh, there's a question about if ind can individuals make donations at this point? So the fundraising goal, all of those details, and I, I don't want to speak out of school. So all of those details will be announced very soon. But just let me say, we want to raise as much money as we possibly can. So we have ambitious goals and we want to continue um, this. The fund is set up to, you know, respond to immediate needs right now, but we do hope that it's something that can exist over time. Um, and what was the other question, Adam? So the other question was, uh, can individuals make donations at this point? We have a landing page. It's not live. Um, as so I said, we're, yeah, we're, we're gearing up to, to make the announcement and everything will go live. I don't think that the fundraising page is going to go live before we um, announce the establishment of the fund writ large. Um, but I could be wrong. Uh, we may decide that we can do that. And if that's the case, then we will certainly broadcast it. There's, there's another question here, and if, if you can't answer at this point, that's fine. Um, are you expecting the awards, I guess, for organizations to be for specific projects or to be general operating? No, Adam, we understand that organizations are innovating and pivoting. And so these dollars would be for general support around particular, you know, around maybe personnel or whatever. But we, these are not project grants. Um, and we want organizations to be able to use the dollars as they need them now. And there's a, there's a question here, Shanita, about criteria, but I'm imagining that when you do the announcement, all the criteria about what organizations and what it, and artists would be eligible. Exactly. It's statewide. Um, it's primarily for arts and culture organizations. We are really trying to focus on organizations that we understand are most vulnerable or more vulnerable that um, are smaller budget organizations, but we have, uh, we have a, we're trying to be as inclusive and broad as possible. Um, but we really, you know, we know that there's some organizations that have fundraising capacity issues that, you know, don't have access to certain dollars. So we want to be really cognizant of that. So I'm trying to be cognizant of your time, but I have a couple more questions if you have okay. another minute or two. Um, so someone wanted to know if you would be ineligible if you received like federal funding like SBA or PPP. No, no, we're, we're, I mean, we're certainly looking at financial strength and health and capacity of organizations, but we're not looking at either of those um, programs as a negative. And, and the fund is specifically for arts. I know, um, so Carol Kronheim, who represents uh, a number of things, but coming from her perspective on the New Jersey Cultural Trust, which funds arts, history, and humanities, is the fund doesn't going to cover all three like that, or is it specific to arts? So we're arts, culture, and, and history. So we're, again, trying to be broad, but the primary focus is arts organizations or organizations that um, are focused on the arts. So you could be a history organization that... Um, has a primary um, connection to the arts. Last question looks like that popped up and then we'll let you get out of here. I, I said that and then of course another question pops up. Um, so is there uh, like a, a target date when you think things will be, the information will be broadcast and when organizations are gonna be like applying, like what that timeline looks like yet? So it, it's very, but within the next couple of weeks, probably Adam, as I said, we have been working on this for months. 
Um, the fundraising um, has been a challenge. As I mentioned, Dodge did make a, an investment in the fund, the Grenin Foundation um, Prudential is regranting some dollars. And um, like everyone else, we've had a similar challenge in um, raising the dollars, but we are very excited that we've been able to raise um, funds so far. And I, I do think within the next week or so, we'll be announcing and setting um, and announcing guidelines, et cetera, et cetera. So um, Jennifer North had asked this great question about how, how the the, the field can provide case studies and data to support the fundraising effort, which is just such a fantastic way to look at this. Um, and it's less of, you know, uh, it's sort of how can we, um, because the, the data that when we submit our reports and when we submit our proposals to, to folks like yourself and to the Arts Council, it's different, things are different right now. Um, so I think that, you know, I just sort of share that to say that it looks like the, the field wants to not only figure out how they can benefit, but how they can help too and sure and um i don't know maybe if folks can send any information to art pride and you can share it with us but we have primarily been using data that the state arts council has been able to obtain and um, some um surveying that art pride has done so we you know i know we don't have um to the minute data but we certainly have been pulling data from the state and also uh, Americans for the Arts, we've been looking sort of at the national numbers compared to New Jersey as well. So we are, you know, very cognizant of the data. I, I don't um, suggest that we have, again, a, a lot of the real time data, but I think we're, we have good data. But if folks have information to share, please get it to us. And, this, and might be, oh. this might be a good, a good opportunity for Jim to share the poll question. <laughs> Yeah. So, Jim, I don't know if you want to share, but we talked about this earlier. Uh, speaking of data, we have a poll about polls for everyone. Sure, Nita, I know uh, you have to run. And of course, the part where I, my internet kicked out was the part where I said thank you. <laughs> oh, for, it's my pleasure. Um, for again, everything I'm, that you're doing and for everything that Dodge is doing. And, and we just so appreciate it. Not a problem. And thank you for asking me to share. I know that this is probably not, you know, all the information that folks wanted, but I do think that, you know, people are, are, are aware that we are trying to create this fund. So I just wanted to share what information we do have. Um, and if there are further questions, maybe Amory or um, Adam or Jim, you can get those to us later and I can share with the steering committee too. Thank you, Sharnita. Thanks All for right. taking the time. Oh, it's my pleasure. Have a good day, guys. Thank you, Sharnita. Bye-bye. All right, and Amory, I know there were at least two more questions that popped up there at the end, and I'm writing them down, and we'll circle back to them. And now I'm going to get out of your way because I know you have an update. Yeah, now's the time for my screen to freeze. So, um, <laughs> thanks, Adam. Um, all right, no, actually, didn't it? Didn't uh, it looks like uh, the rhetorical question of would you respond to a new survey is so far we have 55 people saying yes. Um, so, you know, we were trying to add the the funny question in there about please don't bother me ever again, but um, that's good to know. So um, here we go. And uh, we start off with the slide that yes, I did use Comic Sans. Um, I was trying to figure out, you know, how are we going to talk about what's going on in Washington? And this was the image that came to my mind, uh, which is a little crazy, but you know, kind of accurate. Um, and yeah, now it's time for my now, you know, SpongeBob is going to freeze my screen. Um, I'm going to go back and try again. Um, I don't know why he did that, but we'll see what happens here. No. Nope. Um, so things are crazy in Washington, as you all know. And yes, the the um, the news is uh, we don't have any news, and I'm, that was my problem with. Um, let's see if I can do this. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, and I can't, I guess I've vexed myself with um, SpongeBob here. Share screen. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Current slide. All right, what we know. So um, the president signed the Protecting Nonprofits from Catastrophic Cash Flow Strain Act. I don't know what that, P-N-C-C, -C, can't find an acronym for that. 
as to override the Department of Labor uh, rules that self-insured nonprofits must pay 100% of their benefits cost upfront. Not all nonprofits are in this situation, but there are many that are self-insured nonprofits and have to reimburse uh, back to the Department of Labor. So what this does is um, allow for 100% of, of costs because it had been reduced to 50% of costs. Um, what we don't know is the extension of employment benefits and how and what's going to happen. It's going to be $600. Is it going to be $200? Some say they're now talking about $400 in terms of uh, unemployment insurance. However, the HEALS Act does call for reverting back to um, from pandemic unemployment insurance to disaster unemployment insurance, which is a provision of FEMA. Uh, and it would make it a little bit more difficult for gig workers and uh, people with mixed income because you would have to um, have a declaration of your primary source of income. Um, so, you, you know, the, there's, it's still under debate. And as you know, and if you watched the news this morning or last night, um, they've gone home. Um, there'll be negotiations over the weekend, but I understand it's very contentious. And basically they're um, focusing on the small points that are agreeable and trying to tick them off the, uh, the list as they move forward through the entire bill. Um, and leaving the most contentious for the last, which is not helpful, or maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, some of the other um, provisions that are under consideration that are of high importance, of course, relate to rent evictions, moratorium. Um, the the uh, Republican Heals bill um, is relying heavily on liability protections for businesses, doctors, and schools. Um, there's money for testing, vaccines, et cetera, and then the Paycheck Protection Program loans, um, and then extending the eligibility to 501c6 organizations that would include chambers and destination marketing organizations that had been left off of um, CARES. Um, more provisions, money to help schools reopen this fall, the focus on tax credits. Um, you know, uh, grants are hard for government to um, administer. So uh, they look at tax credits, which they find easier to administer. So some of the Heals Act provisions have to do with employee retention tax credits and also um, work, workforce opportunity, workplace opportunity tax credits and safe and healthy workplace tax credits, which would provide tax credits for providing you know, PP, taking the cost of PPE off. How this relates to nonprofits is also an interesting concept um, because of our nonprofit status. So um, there's a, also a temporary allowance for full deduction of business meals, which of course, you know, we all in the nonprofit business spend so much money on business meals, but it does help the um, restaurant industry that, and they're looking for ways to help the industries in all these different uh, policy areas. There's uh, under consideration a second round of $1,200 rebates. And um, the big problem for New Jersey right now is that um, the, the HEROES Act, which was a democratic proposal that has been shot down up till now, um, has a provision for direct aid to state and local governments. The HEALS Act does not, which is the Senate bill uh, you know, introduced by the Republicans. So they're trying to find ways um, to make this work. Um, here are things that have been happening during the week. This actually just happened this week. The um, Chamber of Commerce Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives launched a letter um, supporting the arts industry around the nation. And they had over 200, um, um, two, I think it was 201 chambers uh, that signed on to this. They did a, a, a similar letter back in May um, there were no New Jersey chambers that had signed on at that point. And then this August letter that went out this week, um, we were able to get uh, New Jersey representation. Adam was uh, instrumental in getting a few of those chambers in there as well. So that is, a, is good, you know, it's positive. All these things are happening in the meantime. Um, the delay on 
the Senate bill um, negotiations actually provides us with more opportunity to advocate. So that is the, the positive, if you were to find a positive in, in any of this. Um, Charitable Giving Coalition is trying to work on how, um, you know, the, the universal charitable deduction uh, can be you, increased. As you know, there was a provision um, in the earlier CARES Act um, that allowed, I'm, I'm trying to think if it was 300 to $500, and they're trying to see how that can be lifted in, uh, so that there's the, the deduction is larger. Um, and so th this is happening as well, and they're advocating for that. Um, the National Independent Venue Association, this is NEVA, we talked about this the last, uh, the la during the last webinar. Um, this group just came to be in March, April, and um, they have, as you've heard, because we talked about it at the last webinar, the Save Our Stages Act and the Restart Act, um, and the reason for those acts because the, um, the fact that PPP does not help many performing arts venues um, and the Restart Act allows for larger provisions within, um, within the bill. Now, again, you know, same thing with charitable deduction and the, and the coalition and, and NEVA, they're all trying to get these provisions into the Senate bill. Um, the, the, the problem right now is that, um, you know, they're saying there's no bill and um, unless these provisions get worked into the big bill, uh, it's likely that these bills are not going to live independently of the, large, the larger negotiations. We're hoping that they do, and this provides time for us to continue to advocate. Um, we will actually have, um, um, we're looking at having a letter um, that goes to our senators regarding um, the Restart Act as a petition in the, uh, on the Art Pride website this week. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're going to see if we can we can work that out as a separate letter, similar to the letter that we had um, offered for um, all the arts organizations to sign related to the COVID provisions um, that support the arts sector. Um, meanwhile, back in New Jersey, um, Governor Murphy, we, we had this uh, on our last webinar. Um, it was July 23rd. He announced a small business lease emergency assistant grant. This is through the New Jersey Redevelopment Authority, um, and it helps uh, less lessees, less less lessors uh, in 64 eligible municipalities to be able to. Um, access support. The, um, the way to find out if you're in one of those 64 eligible municipalities is to go to the link at the bottom. It's New Jersey Redevelopment Authority, njra.us, and there's a, a map there that uh, will tell you if your municipality is eligible. Um, these are the big these are the big action alerts on the Art Pride page, and that's the link there. Um, if you've not yet um, taken action, please go. Um, this action alert took effect this past week, asking Governor Murphy to maintain the level of arts history and tourism appropriations in the uh, upcoming budget. The governor um, will be presenting a new budget on um, August 25th, uh, so there's some time to be able to uh, have your voice heard. Um, we've had about um, close to 500 emails already sent and you can uh, edit the email that's on the Art Pride website. Um, you can add personal stories of how um, it important it is for the governor to maintain those appropriations. Um, and when I talk about maintaining appropriations, I mean, the appropriations he set forth in his budget back in February, which were um, 19.858 for um, the arts and also small incremental increases as well uh, for history and tourism and the cultural trust. And um, the, the state is now operating on a three month budget. It, this is a nine month budget. Uh, we're asking him to hold to his original uh, appropriations, um, also knowing that he's asked all divisions to take a 15% cut um, uh, 
for the nine month budget. So the stress is that the money is needed now. Um, the, the other action alert under that megaphone is di directed to the legislature and asking them to uh, consider the very same thing as the budget is moving forward. Um, we know we'll have better sense, you know, once the budget is introduced uh, on August 25th, but in the meantime, we're not wasting time and we've targeted um, legislators in leadership positions and are organizing virtual visits with constituents from those districts and their legislators um, on Zoom over the next couple of weeks. Um, and they involve arts history and tourism advocates. So we're, we're not wasting any time on this. Um, ask you to please go to keepjerseyartsalive.org um, and you will find all the statistics you need to help with your case when you're talking about why the arts are important. Um, there are graphics, there are toolkits, there are, um, the toolkit includes all kinds of ads that can be used on social media and posters um, at performing arts venues that are closed but still have um, billboards up. Um, so all of this information is available for you there. This is a co-sponsored project, Keep Jersey Arts Alive with the State Arts Council, and we're very grateful for their support to help make this happen. This is just one of the graphics that's available. Um, and then finally, Jersey Arts, I, I wanna make sure y'all remember um, to go to jerseyarts.com um, and um, there are plenty of opportunities to feature Jersey Arts at home. Um, and our staff has been on top of this. Also looking at um, the activities that are now available in any venues that are open. So um, please stay in touch with staff on that. Um, I think that's it for me. If there's questions, um, this is how to reach us. Hi, Adam. Thank you, Anne-Marie. There are a couple questions. Go ahead. I didn't think there were gonna be because it was so comprehensive. <laughs> um, so uh, Joseph um, uh, Brett Schneider says, uh, will emails go out from Art Pride asking that arts history and tourism be included in Governor Murphy's budget? Many of our contacts are not active on Facebook, as hard as that is uh, to believe. So I think he's asking about uh, action alerts. Well, the action, we sent an action alert email out this week. Um, so we'll continue to do that. And, um, you know, I ask you to check your spam file uh, just in case it landed there. Um, and uh, we'll continue to do that, you know, through over the next couple of weeks. And we're asking our, our colleagues in history and tourism to share that email as well. Right, it's a, it's a great point. So if you have an arts organization, you can take that email blast that we send out and turn that around and send it to your staff, to your board, to your volunteers, to your patrons. Similarly, um, you could also send them the link from our, our Arts Action Center where you sign up for our emails and send that out with a request to that same group of people to say, you know, make sure you sign up so that you get the action alerts directly, uh, whatever works for you. Um, so Amory, there was another question here uh, from Betsy Sobo. Uh, Betsy says, I speak to so many people who have no idea that arts and entertainment is 4% of the GDP, more than the agriculture sector. How can we better make this known? Um, we're, how can we better make this known? Um, the talking points are nationally um, on, on the Americans for the Arts and the Arts Action Fund website. Um, we can make sure that the national statistics are there as well. Uh, we also have some Bureau of Economic Analysis information regarding New Jersey. Uh, we'll try to make sure that all uh, the talking points are there. And actually, if you go to the uh, Arts um, Action Center and click on the email before you actually send it, you'll see that there's a link to the talking points. Um, and um, that's related to the Governor Murphy message, not the national message. Um, the national information um, we've included from Americans for the Arts, um, and and actually the letter that was signed by, um, you know, over a hundred arts organizations in New Jersey included a lot of that information in there. Uh, yeah. So I think we're good. I think we got all the questions. So if again, if you need more talking points, 
uh, about public value, um, you know, go to keepjerseyartsalive.org. Uh, if you need more uh, the advocacy information, you can find that. You can see the website right there on the slide, artpridenj.org. But remember, we're here too. Uh, Amory, myself, the rest of the Art Pride team, um, who I'll take the moment to thank, uh, who are always working hard, uh, a lot of times behind the scenes to make sure everything's going well. Um, so we're here if you need us uh, to reach out if you have any questions or concerns. And I think that's it for today, right, Anne-Marie? Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, the last thing I, I did get on the captain's call yesterday uh, when we meet with our um, other advocacy organizations around the country is that the, um, there is also a, an arts and culture section on the, on the Democratic National Committee platform. Um, it calls for increases to the um, cultural agencies, the federal cultural agencies, and it also has uh, mentions, uh, it's a 94 page platform, but it mentions the arts in STEAM, it mentions the arts in K through 12 education, um, and it also mentions the arts um, intervention and in, in prevention um, of, you know, uh, of, of abuse. So um, there, my understanding is that the Republican platform um, is a, uh, identical to the previous one that was used, you know, in the last election hasn't changed. Um, and I'm, I, I'm not informed about any uh, references to the arts in that. Um, all right. I think that's it. Thanks. Yeah, so, for we, so we are uh, we're back again with our next webinar on Friday, August 21st. So uh, that is again at 10 a.m. Friday, August 21st. And we will uh, be in touch with you on the content on that. Um, again, you know where to get us if you need us. And thank you so much to Anne Marie, to Sharnita, to the entire Art Pride team, uh, to all of our funders who keep helping us keep going, uh, and to all of you for joining us this morning. Have a great weekend and be well, everyone.